just going to explain to the people. You're an idiot. I've got blue beads that I took about, to be honest. Oh, yes, good show. Right, viewers, Luke's wife's fault. <laughs> Done. I'm glad she took the blame for that one. Yeah, I've chucked out bits for the old caddy that I shouldn't have chucked out. So, um, <clears throat> turns out this Turan is stop start. Way! Mm, because there's a cable, an X, what is it, an X? So much relay. X relay. X relay, X. The old black and white cable. That got me thinking, if that caddy's got an X current relay, contact relief relay, and this Turan did not, why? Why did it not? So, we're just going to use the caddy shell and transplant the brains of the Turan in, hopefully, when we plug the ECU into the caddy using its loom, conversations happen and things work. However, I don't think that's going to be the case. That's the easiest test to do so far, is to do that. If it doesn't work the way we want it to work, or things are not happy, then over the next few weeks I will remove the entire body loom from this Turan, transplant it into the caddy shell, and it will literally just be a caddy shell that thinks it's a Turan. Wish me luck. So with all that in mind, we set to removing the dashboard and any other bits from the Turan that we wanted to install on the caddy. This wasn't the worst job in the world. All I can say is VW must have run the world's supply of Paned torque screws down during the production of these vehicles because, wow, there were a lot. And after that painfully time-consuming effort, the dashboard was finally free and ready to be removed. So at this point we started exhausting our limited knowledge on Turan caddiness. And the more we looked at the wiring, the more I regretted my stupidity in throwing away the old shell without removing the CU. Oh. Yellow and black cable, we need to find out what yellow and black cable does. And what's that's fused for. Yeah, that's not that's not. This on. is this before I took that's anything off. That's the Turan, off, is it? Before I took anything off, I took this picture. So that's the Turan? Yeah. So we started looking at caddy ECU sets, but then realised a day later that there was no wiring loom left on the shell that I had purchased, and the other loom went to the scrapyard along with the ECU. We then started to try and figure out from photos and memory if the Turan wiring loom would even work with a caddy ECU set should we order one. Went over here, they're all DPF. That's DPF. That's the ABS module. Yeah. That's, that's the ECU. Mm. This is all wiper mechanism. That's your wiper loom. Bottom of the fuse box is in there. Uh, headlight. Headlight. Front fans in it, one of them. Front fans, that's the big. That's oh, the, yeah. that's the front. Hang on then, hang on. No, yeah. that's all. Yeah. Now, at this point, I'm about to give it up as a bad job. The £1,000 budget is blown. I've been through a Cates Caddy, Caddy Shell, Cates Turan and all I have left is a pile of panels and one good caddy engine. But I am not so easily defeated. I could break the Turan to recover some cash, weigh in both the shells, and sell any spare panels and parts if I start looking for an alternative. Another caddy. I'm sick and tired of this
So, I bought a Caddy Maxi. Caddy Maxi, uh, long wheelbase. The plan is going to be, I think, to convert it into a Caddy Combi. I've got all the bits, except the windows. But I can order the windows. So I have the Caddy loaded up, which is good news. Caddy Maxi, looks well. A few little dents and scrapes and marks around it, but that's not the end of the world. Maniac. I'm so glad our roads are this Jesus, what is, who, who, who paved this road? This caddy was listed on eBay with some issues. Most notably, I believe there is a boost issue or a regulator issue. Um, airbag, a few other bits and bobs, ABS sensors, all that sort of stuff. It has had a replacement engine in it already from an Audi A3. This road is literally just gravel. And so I started my return journey back from Scotland with the Caddy in tow. This Caddy is a 1.6 TDI 102 brake horsepower version, with a mighty 243,000 miles on the clock and an unknown Audi engine. It's a fairly basic spec, which I like, but more importantly, I have a logbook and it's not a write-off. I paid 1500 quid for this van, which I think, given the circumstances, was a pretty good buy. A few lights on the dash to sort out first, but... Oh, oh yes! Time. You had a really good time, eh? Hey? You were going to go home, weren't you? I was going to go home, yes. You were going to stop helping me. 